Number 45. Write a set of quantum numbers for each of the electrons with an N of 4 in a selenium atom. Okay, so on the left side I gave you a periodic table because we definitely need to use that. And on the right I'm going to have a chart of all of the N equals 4 uh, quantum numbers. Okay, so first things first, we have to know where selenium is on the periodic table. Se is selenium, and if we look high and low on the periodic table, we would find that selenium is right here. That's the first step. So step number one is find selenium. Step number two now, we have to know um, what subshells selenium has in n equals four, because that's what they're telling me. They're giving me parameters that we have to have an n of four here. Now, this is something new. We haven't used the periodic table for electron configuration yet, so I will start you off um, on your journey, I guess, here. So just know that the periodic table is divided into different subshells. So there's boxes where you can find the S subshells, the Ps, the Ds, and the Fs. So the first thing that you're going to do whenever you talk about electron configuration is this hydrogen box right here always move it to over here. For electron configuration, we pretend that helium, oh sorry, did I say hydrogen before? I meant helium, this is helium. So for electron configuration, we pretend that helium is actually right next to hydrogen because it, it makes it easier for us to get the electron configuration correct. So now, the first two boxes from one all the way down to seven, is the S subshells. So this is where your, oops, this is where your S subshells are going to be located. The P's, remember helium is no longer here anymore. The P's are from this all the way to this. So this is where your P subshell group lies. So if I had to shade it in, it would be literally all the way this whole block over here, right? But now that's kind of messy. And just for reference, the S would be basically this whole thing right here. The Ds are located in the middle. So from this to all the way over here, this is where your D subshell lives. And that's from this all the way over to this. So if I had to color all of this, that's where your Ds are located. And then last but not least, your Fs are down here. So if I just highlighted these two boxes, that's where your F subshell electrons are located. Okay, so now we just have to figure out in N equals four, what selenium has. Well, now we have to number the shells. How to number the shells is you start with one and go all the way down. They actually go by the period. So this would be one, just like it says here, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now there is a um, little trick here. The trick is, is that even though this line is represented by a four, once you hit the Ds, this is actually three D. So star that, um, you know, highlight it, do whatever you got to do. But when you enter this realm, this is actually 3D and not 4D. But all the other ones will remain true. So this, because it's in the one, this would be 1S. And here, over here, since this is in the second period, this would be 2P. The only exceptions is D starts with three, even though it's in four. And then Fs start with four, F, even though they're, they start in six, because you see how they kind of redirect you. So those are your two discrepancies, 3D and then 4F. Okay. So we're trying to get to selenium. What does selenium have as far as the Ds? Sorry, what does selenium have in terms of N equals four? Well, it has a S group, right, which is this. So I'm going to highlight that. Now, I can't highlight this because of what we just said. This is not a 4. That's a 3. So that does not get included. So we cannot include any of the Ds. They're not part of the N equals 4. They're part of the N equals 3. 
But then you go back to finding out that we go back to 4P and we're good to go. So we can take only this box, this box, this box, and selenium's box because we have to collect all the electrons from 4 up until the element, selenium in this case. So let's get started. If we talk about basically a S electron, right? This box, just pretend that they're boxes, not necessarily potassium. Just think that it's a box with just one electron. So that would be N equals four. And the S's, we should know that S always equals an L of zero. So that has to go here. Now, if an L is zero, remember ML is always negative L to positive L. And if it's zero, it would be technically from negative L, negative zero to positive zero, but that makes absolutely no sense. The ML would only be a zero. So here, that has to be zero. So now, what's the MS? The MS, remember, is always a plus one half or a negative one half. So technically, I have two different electrons. I have a plus one half and I have a negative one half. These both represent one electron and these represent one box. So if you said that the plus one half was this box, the minus one half had to be this box. And then you took care of these two boxes of your electrons in the four shell, the fourth shell, n equals four. So I have to do this for plus one half and then I have to do the same thing for zero, zero, minus one half, because that will get rid of the second electron. And now I have four more to go, because I just care about um, the electrons in the fourth shell. So now let's keep going. What would be this electron? Okay, well, we're in the P's. So we should know that now for the P's, an L is always equal to one. So this would be four because we're in the fourth shell, but now L equals one because we're in the P. Now we got to figure out what the MS of this would be. Actually, the ML of this comes off of the L, right? The MS is always negative L all the way to positive L. Let me just make that like that. So now the ML would be, oops, this is ML, not MS. Whoop. So the ML would be negative one all the way to positive one. So it would be negative one, zero, plus one. So I would have negative one, right? One, two, three different orbitals because I have three different MLs. But now let's figure out where the electrons actually lie. Technically, we need to have a spin, right? And they have to all be going in the same direction first before you circle back. That's the Pauli exclusion principle. So with this one, for the electron in this box right here, let's just say that it was like this. And this is ML of negative one. And let's just say that it's a plus. It's going in the top direction. So this would be plus one half. Now let's figure out the electron that's in this box. Well, this would be a zero, right? because it has to go this way. This would be the negative one ML, this would be the zero, and this would be the plus one. And they have to be going in the same direction. That's the Pauli exclusion principle. So then I have four, one, zero with the plus one half. That gets rid of this one. So these two are gone. We have two more left. Let's find out where the electron for the AS one is. Well, Pauli exclusion goes up like that. So this one would be four, one plus one, because that's the ML, and then it has to go in the same direction, so plus one half. That gets rid of this. And then last but not least, you circle back to put the electron in the, uh, the first orbital that you did. So it's kind of like kids on a school bus. Kids will always sit in their own seat unless they're forced to sit with other students or kids, right? So if all the seats are filled, then they will double up. So that's why you put the electron back to the first person, or the first orbital. So this one would be four, negative, uh, actually one, because we're still in the P's, but now this would be negative one. 
and then minus one half because that's the only one that's going down. And those are your set of quantum numbers for each electron that's found in N equals four of a selenium ion. This might have seemed really, really, really tough because this one was the first one that we actually used a periodic table. But trust me, the questions later on, I think in like the next couple of questions, we dive deep into electron configuration, which will give you a more thorough understanding of how to write these quantum numbers. All right, guys. So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. If you want to tell all the students in your class, tell your teacher, whoever, or your professor. Um, it's good to keep the word out there. That will help us out a lot. And I thank you for that. See you guys in the next question. See you later.